Assalamualaikum semua and welcome to another episode of Great People TV. 2021 is about to finish. You're with me, Ben Ibrahim, and my wonderful partner, host in crime, Hana Ismail. Now, Assalamualaikum. Apa khabar? Sehat? Waalaikumsalam. Never been better, Ben. Terima kasih banyak-banyak kepada anda yang sedang menonton kami di Great People TV. Dan seperti yang Ben katakan, kita pun sebenarnya memang sedang meng, uh, mengakhiri tahun 2021 dan pastinya banyak sebenarnya perkara perkara yang nak kita bincangkan sebelum kita menutup tirai 2021 tapi apa-apa pun untuk anda jangan lupa untuk subscribe kami di Facebook dan juga Instagram kami Great People TV Ben. That's right. So subscribe to Great People TV as you can see on the screen right there. Macam Hana kata tadi, Instagram, YouTube and Facebook. And today another great great episode but more no disrespect to our other guests a, a real real milestone that we have someone very prominent and you know about to speak about a very very good topic so we thank you for our guest and i'm going to tell you who our guest is in a minute but very first just remind all of you that you can win a prize at the end of the show a giveaway and stand a chance to win accu answer i saw four in one multifunctional blood glucose meter don't forget accu answer our sponsor for the last couple of months alhamdulillah thank you to accu answer this device helps measure your glucose levels so it can prevent you from having diabetes kan lah betul betul jangan lupa untuk anda guys kena Terima kasih juga kepada IQ Answer sebab apa ini merupakan salah satu alat yang boleh membantu anda untuk memastikan kesihatan anda berada di tahap yang paling optimum. Terima kasih banyak-banyak IQ Answer. Terima kasih IQ Answer and terima kasih to our guest. I'll introduce you to or we will introduce you to our guest very very shortly. But the topic of today's interview is the Malaysia Warisan, Warisan wants to build. That's right. Yes. How are we talking about Warisan? Warisan is the party of Sabah. And just this morning, Warisan has launched and officially declared that they are a national party. So, our guest is the one and only Datuk Sri Shafi Abdal, the president of Warisan, not a state party anymore, a national party. Datuk, welcome to Great People TV. Tanya and congratulations. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. A very good afternoon to you all. Well, Ben and Hana, indeed, I'm so pleased to be on your GPT uh, venue to be with you all. I'm indeed uh, honored and pleased to be on board on your great people television. And uh, of course, I'm well. Uh, and Alhamdulillah, boleh uh, menapas lagi. In spite of all whatever you have gone through, yesterday was another session so tight. I was almost half the whole day was in uh, Parliament debating about MS63, and it is also an issue which is quite close to the heart of many Malaysians, particularly coming from like uh, Sabah and Sarawak. So it is indeed uh, we are so grateful that you, we went through yesterday. And we managed to secure that sort of thing to install the spirit of what have been laid out by our forefathers getting Malaysia to be formed uh, in uh, 1963. Right, right. But I'm so pleased, I'm so pleased, I must say this, you know, uh, indeed, uh, in spite of the be, be very busy kind of uh, schedule that I have, but I'm so pleased that you have invited me here today. Thank you, Dato. We're very honored. I mean, we've been, just to let everybody know, we've been tracking Dato for quite some time. He's always been very accommodating, very helpful. A couple of months ago, he was supposed to be our second guest on Great People TV, but Allah had a plan because Dato used to hit the that day. I'd be great to see that you're now healthy and spirited and ready to go, not just for tomorrow, next week, and next month, but for the long distance of the next general election and after. But Dato, before we talk about, uh, you know, you know, the milestones and the upcoming projects of Warisan. Congratulations once again for launching Warisan as a national party. How does that make you feel and you and your party? Well, it is indeed a very historic, historical kind of a move. Never have we realized and seen any party is registered under ROS, which is uh, located in Putrajaya, uh, and then expanding the wings to peninsula. I mean, this is one uh, uh, historical event. No other parties have done that before. Uh, local party base, sort of like, you know, in in, in coming from Sabah or Sarawak. 
to having that sort of challenges facing it to ensure that we can garner the support coming from the people coming uh, from peninsulas so which is indeed we know that is a great challenge but i think it is timely it is indeed uh, the uh, essential for us to ensure that we have a better footing here not only for warisan as a party itself but i think we are here to build a nation which i think the need for us not only to integrate the people coming from all walks of life irrespective of race and religion so i think it is indeed for, very important essential for us to unite malaysia so i think it is uh, useful i have seen to i have been in amno for more than 32 years and i think i have been serving also the country uh, right from being political secretary parliament secretary deputy minister and minister too and youth lead the uh, supreme council and now no also vice president so i think it's indeed timely that we should move to uh, sort of like a platform where we can build this nation it is uh, the intention is as a result of where when i realized that it is indeed appalling to see what is happening in the country is so sad that uh, within a short period of time hardly two years we have three prime minister you know with a short period of time and then we have seen never in the history i mean before then you have 69 you know emergency and now back to sort of like so racial and religious di- divide where even to the extent the use of uh, tima the name of tima the name of so many things uh, become sort of like you know it's in the limelight of our uh, political arena in livelihood of these people which is indeed uh, should not be because that is not the main issue that we should be uh, fighting for because i think the country must be positioned and the people must be united so this is the uh, sort of like move why it is important for us to provide the choice to the country to ensure that malaysia not only confined to having sort of like a movement where it is solely dependent on amno which is based on uh, race and uh, past which is also based on religion and also dap which is also based on race and so many other things i know that there are other, there are also other multiracial party like pkr like amana like other party too but uh, one must also realize that you know there's a lot of different when we set up this party what is an heritage we call it you know heritage is party one is an where it is indeed uh, we need to inculcate that we need to preserve that we need to enhance among the people in this country the need for us to unite the need for us to ensure that we can do better understand each other among us respective race and religion and then we can build this country uh, unfortunately after more than uh, for sabah and sarawak 58 years and uh, peninsula is about 60 plus years getting our independence we're still you know looking into uh sort of like you know is is a race kind of driven and religious kind of driven move which i think it is indeed very divisive for any society and we have seen that not only in uh, uh places like uh, china even in middle east if you look at it i mean even among muslim they are killing each other i mean you look at iraq and iran they all arabs and they all muslim too but why they are fighting they are killing the life is uh, worthless because they have this sort of belief that they are more muslim uh, this is the islamic way of life this is the right teaching of islam the shia the sunni said we are the one we are the chosen chosen one so i think it is indeed uh, very divisive so i think the need for us to move forward similarly with other countries too i mean when india got it in bandan way back in 1948 it was granted by the british but unfortunately it was so divided because of religious belief and that's how it came about india got its independence pakistan also got independence but in spite of that uh, pakistan was granted independence it is even divided after that within pakistan afghanistan bangladesh so you can imagine it is it doesn't it, it doesn't bring any good to the people in that particular world so we have to learn from what happened before in many other places for us to move forward we must be inclusive 
we, we, there's no questions about the need for us to fulfill the requirement, for example, like under the constitution, Islam is the officer religion, religion and where they think the requirement for us to ensure fulfill 30% of it, the wealth must be shared, but 30% to be given to Wifu Tra. There's no question about that. It's already embedded under the constitution. It is also the policy, which I think other races too agreed upon. They don't question about that. But what is important, there's a question about whether how truthful we are realizing that 30% is granted given to the Bui Putra. Is it a Bui Putra just in uh, Kuala Lumpur? Is it a Bui Putra it's in Sarawak, in Sabah, in Perlis? So we have to really dive deeper to realize why this imbalanced kind of development in this part of the world. And this is what we, we have to do uh, to ensure that uh, we can unite the people. That uniting the people is not just understanding the culture, not only understanding respect, you know, those Chinese with the belief, Buddhist, Malay with Islamic kind of the way you dress, the way you, of the food that you take. And it's more than that as well. You know, there's also an economic factor. For example, like earning a living, you know, how many people's jobless, you know, how many people have been in that particular industry, industrialized, electronic, for example, like, so using that tools, economic tools, that can also unite people. It's not just because better understanding you use, you can speak Malay better than the rest, no. But if you're not sharing the cake, you know, in this part of the world, and then it's not going to be able to unite Malaysia. I mean, there's also a question, for example, like people coming from Sabah and Sarawak, the questions they have been raising all this while since realizing the pandemic, they said that we are so rich, oil rich state, Sabah and Sarawak. You know, 30% of oil derives from the state of Sabah. The biggest producer of gas come from Sarawak. But how come of all the 10 districts in the country, the poorest district, 10, and out of 10, 8 comes from Sabah, Pitas, so many places. So why that is happening in spite of them being the oil producing state? Brunei got oil, they become the richest in the region. Dubai, Qatar, Arab Emirates, they become the richest Arabs country. And here we are in Malaysia. Sabah and Sarawak is still left behind lagging, not only in terms of pocket income per capita, but also we can talk about, you know, the biggest uh, number of uh, depleted schools, you know, scholar died, is in Sabah. So where do we go wrong? So that's why I think it is important for us to ensure that change must be done. So that's why, that's why when I said that why we have to go to Kuala Lumpur, uh, to, to Semenanjung, spread the wing, I think it's high time for us to uh, change. And it's a game changer for us in this part of the world where we should not be based on race and religion. So there must be political transition in Malaysia. But political transition is from race, religious base, to a more inclusive political base, multiracial. After all, if we look into it, since we realize our independence, the country has been governed and ruled by combinations of party, not only based on race like AMNO, MCA, MIC, they combine force, they become a very multiracial kind of grouping. Then they call it the group of Barisan National. But when you have Barisan National, who is more dominant there? It is AMNO, how about MCA, how they might say. So the Indian community said, well, you know, we're still the biggest numbers of people who are very poor. And there is also, I mean, there, there's an issue there lingering in the minds, in the ears of those Malaysians, Indian. And uh, though they are Chinese who are felt rich in the country, they are millionaire, billionaire, but it doesn't reflect that all Chinese are rich. They are also Chinese poor in Sabah, in Sarawak. So I think it is indeed for us to have a proper policy, the need for do some structural changes into how we govern this country. But we can't do the structural changes unless the political kind of structure is not transformed into a system where it is, should not be based on race and it should not be based on religion. You know? So I think this is what we uh, trying our level base. I know it is very difficult to unwind, but we must do something. It's just like what happened in US 
just like what happened in so many countries in the world when we said that you know black life matters how many years did uh, the black people took to realize that the first president of america obama only realized 2013 you know that sort of things that we must uh, realize that it can be done so we should have the will kita kena pastikan supaya kita ada keyakinan we must have that sort of will in us and confidence but of course will and confidence is not good enough you must ensure that couple that with efforts that need the need for us to realize so that that can be a reality in life okay ben okay that thank you so much for that very detailed explanation you spoke about the the what but just very simply very quickly before we hand over to hana and what's this how about the how just the timeline the sasaran obviously the main goal is to win the next general election that be the last party that won the last general election that was their main goal the past two everything else was a challenge so maybe you can tell us what is the you know just maybe three or two simple main goals that you want to achieve apart apart from winning the next general election to which is the main objective like you said a malaysia worth fighting for well i i i said i said nikita just now uh, the political structure in this country must be transformed you know but as if we are able to realize that then it's a lot easier for us to provide policies implementations to ensure that it is it must be embedded for example like how can we share the economy economic cake that uh, that we're having here in, in this part of the world but we must also embed a policy that it is already there 30 percent belong to the Bumi Putra, whereas the rest must be shared with others but how do we do that i know it's not an easy task yes you know yes. people might be saying that well you know this is a party which is based in uh, in sabah you know can they realize this you know spreading the wings will there be some people who are supporting what is and i have been a national leader i have served the country 32 years and i was also vice president of amno for two terms i was also a supreme council of amno for four terms i was also ex corporate muda amno malaysia for quite some time and i also was the chairman of amno the chairman of amno kedah you know for two years so meaning that i'm not an alien i'm not somebody that is really out within the circle of malaysian politics here in peninsula so i do have so many uh, friends around here so i think to ensure how we can realize this well we have to chart a plan to ensure that that's why i said we must start with the launching of uh, what is under the 17 which i think uh, doing, we are doing it today so to ensure that we can realize how best we can uh, provide that sort of choice for Malaysians. And then the next step is that we have to have an alliance. How can we realize this? So the best alliance is that we know that in so many parts of the world, you can uh, sort of like realize change. Uh, and it can be done by not only the people at large, but also the young. So that's why I have discussed with my colleague, uh, Said Sadiq. So, uh, well, I must congratulate him. The party hopefully will get registered. So I did indicate with him, once you have the party, then you use your logo. But if you don't get it, then by all means, please, we are here to facilitate, uh, to ensure that the younger generations in big numbers, we can use the platform. And the moment they want the elections, if the party is registered, they can always do away with it. We are more glad to facilitate, to ensure that, because this is what we need. I think in the country, regenerations of young leadership in the country, we should not shy away. We should not lose confidence that the young can do better than us. We are not just assuming that we are the one, we are the choice, you know, can't be. I mean, you have seen, for example, like Obama, in spite of he is a black guy, at the age of 40 plus, can garner the support coming from all walks of life in America, and he won the elections with a big margin. And why? Because he's providing the choice. <coughs> so these are indeed, <coughs> I think I talk too much. So I think this is indeed very important. For, yeah. So I think this is indeed very important for us. And then how we should do this. Of course, uh, 
we can't unwind this. We cannot realize it within a short period of time. Of course, uh, well, we met, we, we were meant to understand that PH has already signed an agreement, MOU, within the current government that July, yeah, will be the day where they can just call off that they said that, okay, this is it. Elections can be held anytime. But one cannot just predict based on that sort of agreement. The agreement can be also, you know, saying that there will be a breach, you know, uh, just like what happened in 1963. It was an agreement between formations of uh, Peninsula Malaya together with uh, Sabah and Sarawak. But in spite of that, and then some of the breaches in there, so that's why the need for us to install it back so that the spirit of how best we can unite the people together, work together for the betterment of Malaysia and also Malaysia. Thanks, Dr. Thanks. Now? Datuk Sri, sebenarnya saya tertarik dengan uh, statement Datuk Sri sebentar tadi uh, di mana Datuk Sri mengatakan bahawa sudah tiba masanya kita uh, bergerak ke hadapan, move on daripada parti yang base kepada bangsa dan juga agama. Tapi kita nak think, melihat tentang perspektif agama kan, Islam di Malaysia ini. Bagaimana Datuk Sri melihat kan parti warisan ini membantu boleh membantu rakyat Malaysia melihat bahawa Islam ini adalah sebuah agama yang uh, mencintai kedamaian, mencintai kemajuan, mencintai persahabatan. Pandangan Datuk Sri bagaimana? Sebenarnya dalam ajaran Islam itu cukup jelas. You know, it's a very moderate, it's a very flexible religion. Dia tak menggunakan paksaan. Dia tak menggunakan inducement kena ada keredaan dia. Contohnya, selagi umat tak mengucap dua kalimah syahadat, tak wajib bagi dia untuk berpuasa. Tak wajib kepada dia untuk sembahyang, zakat, segala-galanya. Selagi dia tak mengucap Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammad rasulullah. Ya? Sama ada dia orang Melayu, sama ada dia orang Arab, sama ada dia orang Putih. Ya? Tapi bila dia melafaz, barulah diturunkan, wajibnya diturunkan. Tapi dalam bila kita sebagai seorang Islam, kita belajar ya, bahawa Islam itu tidak ada paksaan. It's a very flexible religion, adaptable. Musim tak ada air, kita boleh tamai, tayamum. Musim terkadang itu ada di antara makanan-makanan yang haram, hana, kita boleh makan untuk menyelamatkan nyawa jadi halal. Pasal apa? Pasal so it's very flexible keadaan dia. Yeah? Kalau kita tak boleh sembahyang berdiri, kita boleh duduk. Kalau tak boleh sembahyang duduk, kita boleh baring. Kalau baring pun tak boleh sembahyang, kita kelip mata. That sort of things. So it's a very flexible. Tapi terkadang itu kita tak sedar. Sehingga persoalan contohnya timah pun menjadi satu isu minuman haram. Kalau iman kita kuat. Dah di label minuman itu. Pasal itulah kita gunakan certification halal dan tak harap tak halal. Pasal apa? Untuk membolehkan is a guidance to all society. Ya, bukan hanya di Malaysia, bahkan juga di tanah Arab, bahkan juga di negara-negara Eropah. Halal certification is already worldwide. Tapi malangnya kita ini hanya melihat bahawa Islam itu seumpama itu, sehingga kita boleh berpecah supaya kita boleh berbala. Dalam surat Al-Am, Al-Quran, apa pengertian surat Al-Am itu? Dalam kandungan surat Al-Am, dikatakan jangan hina agama dan Tuhan orang lain. Jangan caci. Jadi mananya itu ayat Quran yang diturunkan oleh Allah SWT. Tapi kadang-kadang kita seakan-akan kita lah. Tak bolehlah orang lain. Ya? Seumpama so, oh, orang Melayu akan mati kalau tak ada UMNO. Orang Cina akan mati kalau tak ada DAP. Islam tak akan berkembang kalau tak ada PAS. Sejak bila pula PAS ada di tahun Arab? Sejak bila pula UMNO ada di Brunei dan juga di Indonesia? Sejak bila pula DAP, parti itu berdaftar di China? China is a very developed world. Tapi tak ada DAP. Orang Cina tak mati. Orang Melayu tak mati di Brunei, orang Melayu tak mati di Indonesia, tak ada UMNO. So that, why 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 should we so bogged down? Itu yang kita katakan simpit dari segi keadaan kita hidup dalam muka bumi ini sehingga tidak membolehkan bahawa 
agama itu sebagai adim cara hidup untuk membimbing kita bukan hanya untuk kita sebagai umat supaya ada kemakmurannya ada kesejahteraan dia Rasulullah di Madinah dia boleh bergabung dengan muhajirin dengan Yahudi apa Yahudi pun tapi apa yang kita nak gaduh kat Malaysia boleh kena dia Cina boleh kena dia India tapi kat rumah kita ada kucing ada ayam ada burung-burung kadang-kadang kita pergi makan you can live with the animals is a god created creature tapi kita dengan orang Cina, orang India duduk dalam rumah yang besar dinamakan Malaysia gaduh. Pasal apa? Oh bangsa dia lain. Pasal apa? Agama dia lain. So kita sedar dan tahu kalau kita gunakan agama, kalau kita gunakan bangsa sebagai landasan kita memperjuangkan dalam gelanggang politik, it will be very divided. Nobody can join UMNO unless you are Malay, unless you are Putra. Nobody can join PAS unless you know you are Muslim. So where do we go? Kita nak pastikan supaya bangsa kita, agama kita dapat kita daulatkan. Kita daulatkan tanpa ada kepartian dia. Ya? Kena kita beribadat itu, kita berjanji dengan Tuhan. Inna solati wa nusuki wa makyaya mati lillahi rabbil alamin. Kita menaikkan solat kita setiap hari, kita menghadap kepada Tuhan. Takkanlah kita nak tunjuk, oh Ben, I'm going to pray now ya. So you nak kirim salam tak? That sort of things. <laughs> tak ada. You cannot do like that, you know. Because is antara kita dengan Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala tentang agama kita. Kena kita juga paham kalau kita yakin sebagai seorang Islam, Allah itu ialah Tuhan semesta alam, God Almighty, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Dia Tuhan kepada semesta alam. Mananya Tuhan kepada semua umat. Tidak kira ayam, burung, ke binatang, ke buah buahan, ke kena segala gala yang ada kita percaya sebagai orang Islam ciptaan Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Diturunkan itu oleh Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala menerusi Rasul-Rasul hadisnya diturunkan ya semata-mata untuk menjadi panduan maka dengan itu adin macam mana kita nak menyempurnakan kehidupan kita kita nak bergantung dengan orang lain nak panggil orang Cina nak melabur ke Malaysia tapi orang Cina kita tindas di Malaysia contohnya kita nak panggil orang India supaya mau oh, jangan Jangan kerja. Orang ni tak boleh kerja kat Malaysia. Orang ni tak boleh. Lepas tu, kita beritahu Islam is the only religion. No other religion yang ada di Malaysia. Kita kena dolatkan. Tak boleh. Ya, memang kita faham. Malaysian respect official religion di Malaysia is Islam. Orang Cina, orang Kristian, orang India dah setuju. Itu dalam perlembagaan. Tapi dalam perlembagaan juga tidak ada sekatan untuk agama-agama lain. Jadi kita faham. Yang bagi kita, seumpama bila saya belajar di England, saya belajar di universiti, sarapan pagi, lepas itu kita minum, saya minum, makan tengah hari, saya minum dalam satu meja, universiti bukan banyak meja, lepas itu minumlah dengan kawan-kawan saya, saya makan fish and chips. Kawan tu makan yang tak halal kan? Lepas itu dia makan, dia punya minuman dia, saya makan, saya punya minuman, fish and chips, dia makanlah. Lepas itu takkanlah saya halau dia orang British. You move there, you know, because you're eating ham and bacon. That is my religion, you know, doesn't 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 allow me to be seated by your side. Adakah dalam hukum Islam bahawa, oh haram untuk you duduk dengan bersama-sama orang yang duduk bersama you, dia minum bir, you minum Coca-Cola. Dalam acara resmi kadang-kadang ada queen yang ni minum wine, ini kita minum air saja. Salah ke itu? Apa yang salah dalam Islam? Jangan makan haram, jangan minum haram. Dia yang makan, bukan kita makan. Takkanlah dia makan, kita haram pula. Kemana ajaran Islam ini? Kepahaman kita tentang Islam, simpit. That is where I think, kalau kita gunakan agama, very-very despisive. Ini yang kadang-kadang permasalahan sehingga kita berpecah belah. Pertilingkahan tentang ajaran, tafsiran. So, eh, sudah sampai ketika dia bagi kita untuk pastikan supaya we must be very inclusive. Kita nakkan supaya macam mana kita inclusive. Kita kena ada permafakatan bukan hanya di antara orang Melayu, orang-orang Islam dengan bangsa-bangsa yang lain. Rakyat Malaysia. Malaysia dihuni. Milik dia bukan hanya milik orang Melayu Malaysia. Milik orang Cina, milik orang India, milik orang Iban, milik orang Dusun, orang Bajau, orang Brunei, orang Kedayan, macam-macam kaum. They are all Malaysian. The country belong to them. 
So kita dah kena pastikan macam mana supaya kekitaan kita akan nak unity. We want them to love the country. Tapi when love the country, only Malay is the tuan. Okay? The rest are not tuan. Tapi kita lupa, ada setengah-setengah kilang, ada setengah-setengah perniagaan premises. Yeah? Public bank contohnya lah. Yeah? Who own public bank? Tan Sri Tung. Tan Sri is a Chinese. Dia milik. Yang pekerja dia, clerk dia, officer dia, financial officer siapa dia? Selain dari China, orang Melayu, orang India. Dia bagi gaji kepada pegawai-pegawai dia, 3,000, 4,000. Dia bawa rezeki. 3,000, 4,000 ke rumah dia. Belanja untuk anak makan, belanja untuk anak sekolah, belanja untuk beli baju. Siapa siapa yang majikan dia? Orang Cina. So bayangkan, kita kena pastikan bahawa kalau kita gunakan agama, oh saya tak nak kerja dengan orang Cina. Oh, orang Cina tak boleh buat bisnes di Malaysia. Macam mana kita nak katakan bahawa the moment you have that sort of policy, besok kita keluar negara being global players in economy. Nak tarik pelabur Cina, nak tarik pelabur India, nak tarik pelabur dari Amerika Syarikat, nak tarik pelabur Kristian daripada Eropah. The Christian in Europe and the Christian in America is saying, well, we have to be very careful. You know, Malaysia seems to be quite racist. And then they're looking into other religions being, you know, they are sidelining it. So they are not being inclusive. That will deter. Dia akan menghindar pelabur-pelabur oleh kena dasar kita dia baca, polisi dia baca macam mana cara-cara kita mentadbir negara ini. Maka dengan itu, transisi, ya, peralihan daripada parti politik pemerintahan yang berdasarkan kaum dengan agama itu, harus kita beralih kepada inklusif. Ahli sunnah wal jamaah. Ya, dalam Islam, kalau banyak jamaah dia lebih afdal dan lebih sempurna. Ya, itu mengikut mazhab Imam Syafi'i. Jadi itu yang saya harap sungguh bila kita melihat perkara ini cukup penting kepada negara kita untuk kita letakkan di landasan yang sepatutnya bukan hanya mampu bersaing di pentas dunia, mampu untuk menarik pelabur-pelabur datang daripada negara-negara luar yang ada bahkan juga kita dapat melahirkan umat yang ada penyatuan unite Dan sebab itu kita perjuangkan warisan is a unity movement in a massive scale yang ada di negara kita dan kita berharap itulah atas di antara sebab mengapa kita perlu panjangkan sayap dia daripada angin timur the wind from the east sebagai satu choice pilihan kepada rakyat di negara ini bukan hanya untuk kita buat pilihannya bahkan juga yang hanya merupakan satu amalan untuk kita memastikan supaya ikatan di antara rakyat di negara ini bukan hanya AMNO. kalau AMNO boleh masuk ke Sabah kalau PKR boleh masuk ke Sabah orang Sabah pun boleh terima orang Sabah pun boleh undi takkanlah pula warisan yang dipimpin oleh Presiden orang Sabah, tapi bekas naik Presiden Amno takkanlah pula orang Semenanjung, istrinya orang Kedah, menantunya orang Johor, menantunya orang Kelantan, menantu orang Kelang, menantu orang Sarawak, takkanlah cucu saya, takkanlah pula kita tak boleh nak tawarkan ya, perjuangan ini untuk kebaikan penyatuan umat dan untuk kita makmurkan negara kita dan untuk kita pastikan bahawa perkongsian nikmat yang diturunkan oleh Allah SWT itu dapat dinikmati. Allah SWT turunkan nikmat, angin yang diturunkan untuk umat menapas, hujan yang diturunkan untuk kita dapat minum air. Tidak ada hujan diturunkan, oh turunkan dia untuk kampung Melayu saja. Turunkan angin itu untuk orang Islam saja. Tak ada nikmat yang diturunkan oleh Allah SWT, Tuhan semesta alam kepada umat tidak mengira sama ada dia manusia, sama ada dia binatang, sama ada dia tumbuh-tumbuhan. Jadi kita memimpin umat. Jangan hanya berlandaskan puak kaum-kaum dan agama-agama. Kita perlu satukan umat. Dan kita sebagai orang Islam harus memberi contoh yang baik. Dakwah kita ialah kalau kita sebagai pemimpin, kalau kita selaku pemerintah yang dari segi amalannya, kesaksamaan dia ada, keadilan dia ada, kebaikan dia ada, maka kita yakin itu sebahagian daripada dakwah. Rupa-rupanya pemimpin orang Islam ni baik. Rupa-rupanya pemerintahan Islam ni cukup baik. 
Bagaimana orang putih boleh berada di Dubai? Boleh melawat Qatar. Kalau kita pergi Dubai, orang putih ada pakai skirt. Orang putih ada minum bia. Itu Dubai. Macam mana orang 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 putih nak pergi Dubai kalau kita oh haram, bia tak boleh dihidang. Ya. Bukan orang Islam yang minum, orang Kristian yang minum. Di Jordan pun ada whisky, di Jordan ada bia takkanlah kita ni tak faham. Haram untuk orang yang minum bagi Islam tapi bagi Kristian takkanlah haram. Ini yang kita kena faham the basic understanding of religion is kita kena kuat iman kita. Iman kita hanya kuat kalau tauhid akidah kita. Kita fahami tentang ajaran Islam sebenarnya itu sebagai din di muka bumi ini. Ana itu ya, jelas, agak, panjang, jelas, panjang, agak, agak panjang sedikit. <laughs> Jelas dan saya rasa itu mungkin antara kekuatan dan foundation yang warisan dah terapkan untuk parti warisan sendiri. Saya rasa insyaAllah mungkin rata-rata Mika akan faham dan mengerti apa yang sebenarnya message dan juga uh, visi nak disampaikan oleh warisan kepada semua. Ya kena saya pun faham. Saya pernah jadi Menteri Perpaduan dan Budaya dua tahun di Malaysia. So terkadang itu bila saya mengurus masalah contohnya Hana tentang orang Islam, orang Kristian dan dia gaduh. Which is the highest minaret. Minaret dia tinggi. Nak azan kedengaran. Lepas tu Kristian cross dia kena tinggi. Letak atas bukit. Lepas itu yang azan kuat-kuat semuanya. Bergaduh. Bergaduh tentang ni. Pasal agama dia nak dia punya minaret tinggi daripada church. Yang church pun dia nakkan supaya Christian cross dia kena tinggi daripada masjid. Is that the real teaching of all religion? No. The important part of how our religion must be, apa yang penting, penerapan, ajarannya. Itu yang jauh penting, ajaran agama di gereja, ajaran agama di masjid-masjid oleh orang-orang berdakwah, imam-imam, ustaz, padrinya, pastornya. Kandungan ajaran itu jauh penting dari ketinggian bangunan. Kecantikan bangunan. Apa artinya kalau bangunan mestinya besar tapi terkadang tidak ada. Saya kadang-kadang dulu saya menteri kampung. Lepas itu oh minta masjid. Kasih banyak masjid. Dalam satu kampung kadang-kadang dua tiga masjid. Nak kan? Tak jauh. Ada lima, lima, lima kilometer. Ada yang dua kilometer. Nak masjid sana, masjid sini. Tapi terkadang itu berapa orang saya jadi masjid. Nak mas- banyak masjid dari kandungan jumlah umat pun nak bersolat Maghribnya, Isyahnya, Subuhnya ke mana kita nak daulatkan? Pembaziran. Boleh kita katakan kalau masjid itu dah lingkungan yang within reach of the people to go to the mosque, pemudakan maka dengan adanya masjid daripada 10 kita satukan 2-3 mungkin kita dapat unite. Pasal itu dalam Islam dia ajar di antara rukun selain daripada lima waktu amalan yang diwajibkan ialah memperhatikan solat Jumaat. Pasal apa Jumaat itu dirayakan sebagai hikmahnya? Supaya semua kampung, supaya semua umat, dia boleh sembahyang di rumah dia. Tiap hari, lima hari, tapi when come to hari Jumaat, dia kena sembahyang Jumaat di masjid. Dia tak boleh sembahyang Jumaat di rumah. Rukun dia 40 orang. Pasal apa 40 orang rukun dia? Pasal itu memastikan supaya disatukan umat dari kampung sana, dari kampung sini. Tidak cukup daripada itu, diwajibkan naik haji atas kemampuan kita. Tidak ada dikatakan, oh naik hajilah di Kuala Lumpur, naik hajilah di Dubai, naik hajilah di Qatar. Dia cuma satu saja. Iaitu di Mekah. Ziarah bukan wajib, sunat. Di Madinah. Ya? Pasal apa umat dikumpul di Kaabah? Untuk menunaikan kewajipan naik haji. Pasal di situlah orang putih, orang Jepun, orang semuanya Islam disatukan. Tak mengira bangsa sehingga dia pakai baju ikramnya putih. Serata. Tidak ada baju warna pink, tudungnya merah, tudungnya itu. Semuanya serata kepada umat. Ya, Sehingga terkadang tidak perlu pakai apa benda pun. Cuma pakai itu saja. Ya, ikramnya. Pasal apa? Supaya hikmah perintah Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala pakai ikram disunatkan untuk membolehkan supaya tidak ada perbezaan umat tidak kira sama ada dia raja sama ada dia ketua menteri sama ada dia perdana menteri 
tentang beramal kepada Allah Subhanahu Taala bukan diukur dengan darjatnya, bukan diukur dengan warna kulitnya, bukan diukur oleh kena bangsanya. Ada orang putih Islam menunaikan haji. Ada orang Cina daripada China menunaikan haji. Pasal apa tunaikan haji? Pasal dia orang Islam. Jadi itulah makanya bagaimana kita belajar hikmah kejadian di dunia yang berlaku. Itu yang saya berucap di parlimen. Ya, citing one of the prominent guys saying that. Saya katakan, saya berucap di parlimen semalam, saya katakan sejarah itu penting. Sejarah ini merupakan ialah rentetan kejadian dahulu kala dan dia boleh mempengaruhi keadaan semasa dia juga boleh membentuk masa depan negara dan bangsa so history is more than a path left by the past it can influence the present it can shape the future kalau kita tak sedar, pasal itu kita perjuangkan. Bagi tahu MS63 spirit of what our forefathers have done that. Don't under don't undermine don't don't underrate that. You know that's the values yang ada kekitaan kita membentuk Malaysia orang Cina ada. Kalau kita nampak tahun 60-an bila bila kita membentuk Malaysia ataupun sebelum kemerdekaan British semua Cina tak kira bangsa. Sehinggalah timbul dasar-dasar itu untuk membolehkan Krisis 13 Mei, perjanjian itu berubah-ubah tahun 76, ubah perlembagaan Sabah, kedudukan dia diturunkan bukan sebagai wilayah. Walhal dia waktu tahun 1976, tuan yang terutama di Sabah bukannya yang di Pertuan Negeri, di Pertuan Negara. Pasal apa? Sabah sebagai sebuah wilayah. Sarawak wilayah, dia bukan negeri. Melayu waktu itu merangkumi beberapa negeri Perlis, Johor, Kelantan, Terengganu. Waktu itu dinamakan Melaya. Merdeka 57. Melaya was the represented by the Chief Minister Almarhum Tunku Abdul Rahman. Siapa yang mewakili wilayah Melaya? Ialah Tunku Abdul Rahman. Siapa pula mewakili wilayah Sabah? Not Borneo. Not Borneo sebuah wilayah yang mewakili Not Borneo, Tun Fuad Stephen, Tun Mustafa JS Sundang, siapa mau pilih Sarawak? Tun Temanggung juga. Ini di antara tokoh-tokoh yang telah membawa pikiran permuapakatan sebelum itu ditanya umat di Sempurna. Saya masih ingat, saya ikut ingat ibu saya, saya masih kecil. Kobol Commission datang pada tahun 1962. Datang ke Sempurna, orang kampung tanya, setuju saja kita membentuk? Setuju, setuju ke kita dibentuk, apa membentuk Malaysia? Bukan kita masuk Malaysia, kita yang membentuk Malaysia. Waktu itu tak ada Malaysia. Yang ada waktu itu Melayu saja. Belum ada Malaysia. Sehinggalah bila ada gabungan antara wilayah-wilayah Melayu, wilayah-wilayah Borneo, Sabah dan Sarawak, Singapura, maka digelarlah negara Malaysia waktu itu. Jadi kita kena faham. That's why I said, we must make sure that you understand bila Islam itu diturunkan berbagai rasul daripada Nabi Du, Nabi Adam, Ibrahim AS, Semuanya Nabi Muhammad peng, pengakhir zaman Nabi diturunkan berbagai kejadian diingatkan. Kenapa sunat untuk kita memperingatkan apa yang dilakukan oleh Rasul? Beribu tahun kita kena ingat. Tapi ini perjanjian jangan ikan. Itu baru 63. Itu bukan sunat. Tapi dalam Islam disunatkan untuk kita beramal menyatu padukan umat yang ada. Bukan kita katakan oh yo mesti. Tak ada, disunatkan kebaikan-kebaikan untuk kita saling bantu, membantu atas kemampuan kita. Jadi itulah hakikatnya, kita ingin menyediakan satu landasan kepada rakyat di negara ini supaya jangan kita berbalak, jangan kita berpecah. Kita adalah rakyat di negara ini yang akhirnya kalau kita perjuangkan semata-mata parti kepartiannya berlandaskan agama, tak akan ke mana. Di Indonesia itu ada orang Cina namanya, Soeharto, Soekarno, macam-macam. Bukan Soeharto Presiden, bukan. Nama-nama Indonesia, Indonesia yang ada. Walaupun dia bukan orang, bukan bangsa Jawa, tapi bunyi namanya macam orang Jawa. Dan pasal apa? 
they want to build a nation. We are not asking people, the Chinese, remain yourself, your name there as Ahok, Along, Apaka, remain as it is. But we are all Malaysian. We love the country, but how can we unite? Kalau asas foundation pemerintahan, political structure, dasar daya sara yang ada, perkongsian kekayaan, hanya kita laungkan keluarga Malaysia. Ya? Tapi dalam keluarga Malaysia, bila you sign memorandum, you jadi keluarga. Peruntukan tak turun. Tapi kalau kalau sign, or become keluarga. Is This is what is the spirit of how we bond the people. Inika spirit yang kita nak satukan umat berbagai bangsa oleh kena ikatan yang saya katakan only when you sign only when you sign you give 3 million peruntukan Anwar menjadi status menteri dia what does it mean dia unsur-unsur rasuah you bagi 3 juta peruntukan you sign you encourage people ya yeah? so next election ada pilihan raya akan datang don't worry we fight kita gaduh sama kita Lepas itu, you sign memorandum, saya bagi peruntukan. Look at what happened in Melaka. Bila kita tengok di Melaka, apa jadi di Melaka? Mereka turun di Melaka. Siapa yang turun? Tan Sri Mayudin, Presiden, Presatu. Dia turun. Jangan undi UMNO. Lepas itu, turun pula Perdana Menteri. Siapa dia? Ismail Sabri. Jangan undi bersatu. Undilah UMNO. Pasal dia naik Presiden UMNO. Who is he? He is the Prime Minister. Who is Mayudin? Advisor to the Prime Minister. So the advisor is telling the Prime Minister, jangan undi Prime Minister. The Prime Minister, don't vote for my advisor. Kill my advisor. The advisor said, kill the one I advise. Lepas itu, bila sampai ke Putrajaya, duduk satu meja, minum kopi sama-sama, Kongsi mana projek, mana jawatan yang kita nak kongsi. Ke mana orang kita, kita nak letakkan. Kebingungan, pemerintahan kita berpolitik, confusing the people. Tidak ada good values. Tidak ada nilai-nilai yang baik yang kita paparkan kepada umat di negara ini tentang bagaimana ketelusan keikhlasan kita dalam perjuangan. Saya kalah di negeri Sabah. Bukan kalah oleh kena tidak cukup undi. I got the majority. Tapi mereka bergaduan salah satu dengan yang lain. PBS tanding dengan Star, Amno lawan dengan Bersatu. Lepas itu boleh pula bergabung. I got the biggest majority. 32. 20 lebih ahli warisan yang ada. Tapi mereka gaduh-gaduh lepas tu jadi pemerintah. Pasal apa? Berbagai tekanan yang ada. You have never seen that. The United Kingdom, parti yang ada 400 tahun di UK. Bukan parti Kristian, bukan parti orang putih, bukan parti Irish, parti apa dia? Labour, konservatif. What is Labour and Conservative stand for? What is Democrat and Republican stand for di Amerika Syarikat? 300 tahun di Amerika Syarikat, 400 tahun di United Kingdom parti-parti ini. Dia berlaskan isu driven, isu apa yang mereka nak perjuangkan? Pekerjaan, ekonomi, pentadbiran negara, kesihatan umat. Sistem pendidikan yang ada, sistem infrastruktur yang ada di negara kita. Ini tak kaum, agama. So ini yang kita kena sedar. Tak berarti bila kita nak lahirkan perjuangan ini, kita panjangkan sayapnya ke semenanjung berdasarkan dengan inklusif berbagai bangsa, maka terhakislah kedudukan orang Melayu. Terhakislah kedudukan agama Islam di negara ini. Kita sedar dalam pelambagaan dada-dada, agama resmi. Negara ini agama Islam. Bangsa lain dah pun sepakat, dah setuju, tak soal. Kedudukan Bumi Putra dipertahankan 30% itu dasar polisi nasional yang semua kaum tak persoalkan. Ini yang saya katakan. Jadi jangan bimbang sangat. Terkadang itu, oh akan hancurlah, tak adalah Islam dia. Itu yang saya katakan. Tak ada pas di Brunei, orang Islam subur. Tak ada UMNO di Indonesia, Jokowi bukan main maju Indonesia hari ini sebagai the choice of investment place that many foreigners are so keen to invest, foreign country, foreign investors. Jadi inilah saya katakan uh, Hana dan Ben uh, penting bagi kita untuk menyedari hakikat 
nilai-nilai dalam hidup kita. We must have the right values in life. The moment you have the right values in life, you will have the right path. Ya. Yeah? Kadang-kadang orang cakap, kenapa Datuk Jafi tak nak masuk berkongsi dengan uh, dia di Pelawa oleh rakan dia Tan Simayudin Perikatan Nasional di Pelawa oleh rakan-rakan AMNO Ismail Sabri sign memorandum. Kita kalahkan AMNO, kita kalahkan BN pilihan raya yang lalu. Mandat rakyat pada pilihan raya ke-14 ialah Pakatan Harapan Warisan Plus. Hilang. Oleh kena syaratan move yang ada. Bila hilang kuasa itu, mandat rakyat beralih. Kita jual. Ya? So nilai apa yang saya nakkan? Boleh. Besok pun saya boleh panggil. Boleh dapat jawatan menteri ke? Apa jawatan menteri ke? Boleh dapat projek. I can do that. Ya? Even tomorrow pun boleh. Dulu pun dah ditawarkan. But is that the right thing I do? Saya boleh jual parti saya. Tak kisah sangat, asal saya dapat jawatan, asal saya dapat projek, orang sabar, tinggalkan ya. sebagai presiden, tak kisah sangat. But don't forget, saya buat itu mungkin manusia tak nampak, tapi Tuhan nampak perbuatan kita. Ya, Akhirnya what happened? Setelah Tan Sri Mahyudin melantik orang UMNO bukan hanya Menteri Kanan, bukan hanya Timbalan Perdana Menteri, dia jadi Perdana Menteri, dia kena buang jadi Perdana Menteri. Oleh orang yang dia lantik timbalan Perdana Menteri. Oleh orang yang dia lantik Menteri Kanan. Oleh orang-orang yang dia lantik Menteri-Menteri. Pasal asasnya, landasannya tak seperti apa yang kita berpegang. Kalau lah saya ikut dengan dia, kalau timbalan Perdana Menteri pun boleh dibuang, takkanlah pula timbalan Menteri timbalan Perdana Menteri ataupun Perdana Menteri-Menteri tak boleh dibuang. What will happen to my party? Is that the choice? Your president, warisan, have done at the pretext atas nama kita kena satukan umat. Kita nak padukan umat. Adakah mereka bersatu? Kita nak keluarga Malaysia. Tapi kalau sign memorandum baru keluarga. Kalau tak sign, tak keluarga. <laughs> Is that the reality in life? Ya, yeah? Kita kena yakin berpegang daripada asas dia. Tuhan semesta alam. Kita adalah makhluk Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jadi kita kena terkadang itu bila sehingga apa ni bukan boleh mengundi kucing di rumah saya tu tapi saya bagi makan kucing itu saya bagi makanan kucing tak cukup bagi makanan bagi teduh dia kalau hujan simpan tempat rumah dia untuk dia tidur itu kucing binatang tak ada bangsa dia tak ada pakaian dia tak pakai netai dengan kot pun tapi kita selaku insan manusia kita kena sedar dan tahu ciptaan Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala ini kena ada dijadikan ini untuk menjadi petunjuk kepada kita kasih sayang ada tak mengira sama ada bangsanya sama ada makhluknya ya itu sehingga kalau kita nak menaikkan sebagai orang Islam nak sembeli binatang pun ya kena ditajamkan pisaunya jangan tumpulkan pisau matanya kena disunatkan jangan nampak supaya Bisanya itu tidak kelihatan. Kalau pisaunya tak tajam, bila kita putung leher dia, penyiksaan dia cukup lama. Siksanya tidak lama itu. Tapi kita korbankan binatang atas amalan kita kepada Allah SWT. Tapi dalam kita beramal, jangan kita menyiksa umat ciptaan Allah SWT. Uh, Datuk, uh, thanks for sharing that. And you, brought, you covered a lot of very valid points more about the ethics. Like you said, you could have done a project. But that's not the right thing to do. And you want to do the right thing. And young, what inspired us during what you said that you do is that you said you want to unite the people. That means to unite the Malaysian people, you are up against this the mindset. Mindset bahasa. Mindset sekolah. Mindset public holiday, mindset workforce quota, mindset chopstick. Okay, the list goes on and on and on lah. Tapi, because when I first started working 18 years ago, sorry, but I'm a bit more older than Hannah. Everything was about race, race, race. Back then, tak ada Instagram, tak ada Facebook, tak ada Twitter. And I told people, race is something that sprinters do, 100 meter race. Tapi, everything was about race then. 
over the years died down sikit but now like you said certain politicians get about their political agenda because it's incepted into the mindset of the Malaysian people how can Warisan change that mindset because it's not easy like you said Ben, thanks a lot for the questions you posed me. It's a very relevant, it's very important question. I think it is indeed very important because I must cite this. Ben, Anna, we were born poor, naked. You don't have shirt, you don't have to do, you don't have handphone, born poor, naked. You can't speak, you can't talk, you can't run, you can't eat born poor but the moment you die you die poor you can't talk you can't speak you can't dress with coat go to the graveyard then no angel will ask you welcome young amok berhormat president warisan you're wearing a good tie and neck uh, and coat there Tada. born poor born die poor what does it mean in life it is always a struggle people believe in it Human being can go through all the obstacles in life, but to test a person, give them the power, give them the chance, and then there you know how he can face all the obstacle. People with power, sometimes they will abuse their power if they have the power. People like us is an opposition. It's very tough because we're in a project. We don't have the means to compete, whatever it is, but change can be done. How it is going to be done? We must first have the desire to do change in our inner self. It's not easy to unwind. It's just like when I said just now in America, black life matters. It took them how many years, hundred and hundred of years to realize Obama to become the president of America, Sharikat. To become vice president of America. Kamala Harris, have anyone, when I landed in London 1975, I've never thought a mayor of London comes from a group of people, Pakistani. I've never thought the Chancellor of Exchequer in London, in UK, an Indian guy. Now it is an Indian guy. It is always possible if you have the will, but you must chart the will. We must begin. It matters. It doesn't mean that I know it's not easy to unwind this, but we must start the ball rolling. Change must be done. I might not be able to harvest it now, you know, but we must start to ensure that change, transition must be done in this country. But it by not just saying, but we must chart the way forward on how to ensure that we can realize this, to convince the people. And that is why we need to launch it we need to have a better understanding, engagement. You have never seen Islam was not in Malaysia. Islam was, was not in Sabah. Hardly, hardly seen a thousand years ago. Only when, when it was spread, the Arabs went there, and then it is now known, it is now understood. And it's become the followers of Islam, the right teacher of Islam. It can be done, So, but we must have the will. Will alone, it must couple with efforts, chart the way, you know, to ensure that we can, we have the right kind of planning and also be inclusive in nature. If we are inclusive in nature, I think Malaysia, end of the day, can play a global role. So for those businesses, for example, like the younger generations, how do you get your educations in Australia, in United Kingdom? I could not have, I could not have been an economist. I could have done it in Malaysia, yeah? but I went to England, studied there, spent my time there. And I was taught by the British, my lecturer. You know, I cannot help the British and the need for us to work together. And that's why I think uh, we must have that sort of belief in life. That, of course, there are always obstacles, but if we have the will, yes, we can do it. So I think this is where I think the mindset is very clear. But it must, we must ensure that inculcate also with the need for us to chart the way, to realize that, to unwind the thinking of only AMNO can survive, only PAS can survive, only DAP will be the choice among the Chinese. We managed to topple AMNO after 60 years, the last PR14, 
if that can be done, don't tell me race base can be unwind in this country. But it must, we must have the right leaders. And that's why I said it's important for us. The problem with our country is that leadership and how the leaderships born in this part of the world. It is based on race. And look at that now, what is happening. So I think we must move forward to ensure that we can build this country, be inclusive, respectable race and religion. We are building a nation, not building a race, not building a particular religion. And uh, Dato, in terms of, like you mentioned, that he, you mentioned about Sai Sangri, if he doesn't get his party registered, he can you know, go through your channel. Can't really hear you, Ben. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Loud and clear. Yeah. Right. Uh, repeat that question. Dato, you were saying just now about Sai Sangri, you know, about, you know, if he doesn't get his party registered on time, he can come through you and then you can facilitate. And then you would mention that he, you know, Prime Minister, his advisor was saying something else. The Prime Minister was saying something else. So, but then they go out for Makan after that and say, hey, what next? I mean, like nothing ever happened. So, the question that we have for you, and we only have a few more questions left, is that tell us about the alliance, because to topple the Barisan national government is not easy. You did it in the last election, yes. But, I mean, if Malacca is anything to go by, they're, they're still quite strong. Okay? And, uh, and I know you want to change that for the better Malaysia because of, you, know, you don't want it ra uh, racially driven, you don't want it religiously driven, you want it to be prosperity and ethically driven. So, but to get there, you need partners and alliances. Tell us about the potential partnerships and alliances with other parties outside Wadisan, you know, to win, to potentially win the next general election. Well, in life, you have to believe that you can't do it alone. You did an alliance. We have seen, for example, like, you know, Second World War. Europe, Britain, for that matter, French, could, for that matter, Italian, could not have been able to defeat the German, Hitler, without the alliance coming from, support coming from US. And that's how NATO was set up. <laughs> on how the collaborations to ensure that they can win the battle. In life, Ben, Hana, you can't have children. You have to have a wife. A wife have to have a husband, meaning that you need a partner. But you must also realize that you have to get the right partners, the right alliance. We have done that in Sabah. A single party based like Burjaya, was only one multiracial party. Everybody was on board. They managed to secure for 10 years to govern Sabah. So was PBS, a single party. PBS managed to secure almost nine years, 10 years, govern Sabah based on multiracial. I know it's not easy. You know, not many people knows about Warisan, not many people knows about who is Shafi Abdal. Certain Amno leaders, certain people, certain villages that went to orang asli indigenous most likely in Pahang, in Johor, who have I helped them before when I was then minister. You know, they might be able to remind, remind them, oh, we know you, you were then the minister, Menteri Kampung. So that sort of things, when I look at it, we must look into, uh, into how best we can align. But also we must look into who we can align with. We cannot just simply align and you get toxicated. I mean, this is just like, you know, if I don't put my mask, I will catch the COVID. And, you know, when you catch the COVID, is it phase one, phase two, stage one, stage two? Well, it's very, it's very important for us to ensure this because I think it's, we have to be truthful to ourselves. And also, our partner must also realize this. There are reasons. For example, like what happened in Sarawak. You know, they've been saying, don't allow the best financial party to be on board in Sarawak. And all they're fighting among themselves there. What is the intention? Because there's only 31 parliamentary seats there. In Sapa, we have only 25. In, in Peninsula, we have 168 altogether. So the bigger number was there. When we reached our independence, 
where we formed Malaysia in 1963, there was sharing of numbers of uh, seats among us. But unfortunately, as we go along, out of 222 parliamentary seats, almost 168 are all in Peninsula, whereas Sabah start with 25, Sarawak is only 31, all in all between Sarawak and Sabah is only 56. So you can imagine when we amend, the constitution was not able to realize that until changes can be done. So I think it is indeed, but more than that, I think what is important for us to ensure that we can unite our Malaysian. I know it's not an easy task, but to spell out who will be our lines, we start first. Step one is with the young, because we, need, we know that it's the young who can always make changes. You have, you have seen revolution after revolution coming from China, Tiananmen Square, all the young's movement were there. After all, it's the young who is going to, you know, uh, end of the day, determine the future of this country. So I think it is indeed very important for us to uh, work closely with uh, MUDA. I'm already indicated and we have several discussions with them on how best we can realize it. Whereas the rest, uh, we can look into other angles. Of course, if they are the party, I think, quite willing to work with us, we must be very, uh, not to say selective, but very careful to ensure that we don't have the right sign a uh, different kind of perspective. All of a sudden, the people will say, wow, you know, you're talking about inclusiveness, and yet you're ganging up with some of those guys who are racist, who are going extreme in their religious belief. So it doesn't blend well with what, you know, that sort of things that we promote and propagate to getting people to be united. But of course, you don't neglect them, you know. We have to ensure that in life, yeah, there are tiger who eat human being. You know, now how do you how how can you ensure that we can live peacefully? You know, sometimes you chop the trees. There is no more house for the tigers. Like in Sabah, you chop all the trees, and that's why there were incident before I took over the government of the day in Sabah. Elephants dying almost every month. Why? Because we all extract the timber, and how come the elephants? From the jungle, they have to move to the certain urban area. They all destroyed palm oil plantation, destroyed all the banana plantations, sometimes to the extent threatened human life. Because to the elephants and wildlife, there's not enough food for them in the jungle. It's been chopped by the people. And that's why, that's the reason why I stopped export of logs in Sabah. Because we need to protect not only human beings. Elephants also need to be protected. They have to have a shelter. Otherwise, that species will not be there. So this is indeed very important. But how do you provide them? You know, that's why I think uh, we learn our lessons well. For example, like in, you know, uh, South Africa, in many African countries, where they have big safari they, by thousands of acres, they house all the animals, they feed all the animals, so they can live happily. They can, you know, produce generations after generations of uh, animals down the line there. So I think it is indeed very important for us to to look into who are our best alliance to ensure that we can win the next election. Look, I only have one more question. Saya ada satu soalan lagi, tapi nak? Any other questions before I ask my last question? <laughs> Well, I'm pretty much satisfied with uh, what Datuk Sri have presented uh, on Warisan so far. And I actually look forward to this, you know, alliance with Muda because I think it will be quite interesting as well. I just wonder who else would you invite, openly invite, you know, to join Warisan. So I'm just curious on that part. That's all. Ben, over right. to you. Well, I, I, I have to be very cautious on this because I think my true experience, what I have done when I was in BN, you know, I remember I told Tun Mahathir, I said, you know, Tun, in Amno, you know, we are talking about the Malay dominance there. And then out, after out of Amno, we go for a drink. Who did we mix around? Having a breakfast and talk to my colleague, Lim Kenyak, Sami Velu, Indian and Chinese. All of a sudden, it doesn't blend well. It sounds like I feel I'm quite hypocrite, you know. I said, they're Indian, they're Chinese. How can they look after the well-being of these people? And uh, that's why I decided to form a multiracial party in spite of the old men wanted me to be under Bersatu to become the deputy president of Bersatu. I said, no, I want to promote a multiracial party to ensure that this is the way forward. 
what a country. Uh, it should not be based on race. It should not be based on religion. I think that is part and parcel of our uh, values where we need to enhance that. You know, as a Muslim, I want Islam to be the right part, I mean, a deen way of life. Oh, but it doesn't mean that, you know, the rest, you can't have it. You can't allow them to have that sort of teaching. So I think it is indeed that when I look at it, it's high time that we must move forward uh, to ensure that how best uh, we can promote that sort of initiative. What is I'm going to Sumnanjung, but I do hope that, Hana, you can get a form and register yourself. That is the first step <laughs> to ensure because the battle, I mean, we can't, we can't do it alone. I think, I know the movement is not so easy. I know that it's not going to be an easy task for me to unwind this. You know, I have a grandchildren coming from Kelantan, Wakap Cheye. I have a granddaughter, grandchildren, grandson coming from Malanau, Chinese, Sarawakian, you know. I have a, I have a, grand, uh, I have a daughter-in-law coming from Moa, Johor, you know. I have a son-in-law coming from uh, Kelang, Selangor. So this is the thing that, you know, where do we go? I'm looking at my generations. It's not only about my kids. It's not only about my family. You know, I'm, I'm in politics. I want to, you know, orang bilang beramal. I remember the last PR14. My own brother, Datu Yusuf, was the Amno divisional leader in Lah Datu. He stood there. I put a candidate, a sergeant, Bumi, police sergeant, topple my own brother. Topple my own cousin, Datuk Nasir, the son of Tun Sakaran, my own cousin, Datuk Razak, you know, with my candidate. You know, and I told him, I said, I'm here in politics, not for the family, but for the people, for the country. I love my family. There's no questions about that. They're still my brother. They're still my family. That is in me. I can't say that that is not my DNA. It is still there. I love them so much. But once you're a leader, you should not confine your doing of things to your own family. It, you must look at a bigger picture. We have a big family. So what do we do? You must be sincere enough to yourself. I could have just arranged with my brother. I said, you win the elections, you jump over. And I can just let uh, do me, uh, YB now. But I'm just say, okay, forget about it. He's not my blood. Stood there, asked him to just contest. But I didn't do that. Because I knew he was quite doubtful when he looked at me and said, is this guy sincere enough putting me as a candidate to topple his own younger brother? So I told him, I said, do me, wait until the elections. If you win the elections, then I'm telling you, and that is what is in my heart. He won the election. My brother lost the election. So, you know, I know that. Most likely people doesn't know. But I'm worried, I'm scared. God knows what I do in this world. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, final question. Dato Sri Shafi Abdal, President, Watisan. If you were to become the 10th Prime Minister of Malaysia, what kind of promises would you try to deliver to the Malaysian people? Final question. Well, first of all, I think it's important for us to unite Malaysians. Unity is indeed very important. If you can't unite them, how can you put Malaysians to in a better footing, a very competitive nations, and an industrialized kind of nations where the people can work together closely? And I think that is the most paramount important things. So to unite Malaysian. When we inculcate policies, when do politicking, it should not be based on race and religion because you know along the way, history has shown in our life. If whatever we do in life, it is based on race and religion, it's very divisive. And how can we unite Malaysia when under one roof, hidden under PWTC, AMNO is fighting for the Malay? But which particular Malay that you are fighting for is only Amno. Not Warisan, not PAS, not PKR. You know? And then you are similarly with DAP, similarly with PKR. When I said it's a multiracial party, you know, PKR, President, 
down the line, down the line that who is the deputy president of PKL, who is the second general of PKL. It's a multiracial party. What reason is a multiracial party? The president is Shafi Abda. He's a Muslim. He's a Malay. Who is the deputy president? They're liking. He's a Christian. Who are the vice president? We have a Dusun, Peter Anthony. We have a Chinese, Jun Wong. Who is a Malay, Zhao Jian. Who is the secretary general? Lorito. Who is the Mandahari? Terence Yambun, the Dusun from Pinampang. So we, it's not just because of your, uh, you know, you spell it out in your speech, we are multiracial party. But when you look into the inner party structure, it's not really reflect the real inclusiveness. It is not through your voice speeches making promises, this is what we want to do with Malaysia. You know, it's a developed country. But how do you share the cake? You know, when you talk about the fight for Buin Putra 30%, which particular Buin Putra? Is it Buin Putra coming from Perlis, Kedah, Kelantan, Sabah, Sarawak? How many Buin Putra coming from Sabah and Sarawak have been neglected in that sort of area? I think that's not being inclusive. So what is important for us to unwind that, I think we have to unite relation first. And we must have the right policy. And there's a lot of things that we need to do. Structural changes in terms of government outfit. The reform must be done. You know, they are very important institutions. You talk about judiciary, you talk about SPRM, you talk about police, you know, talk about all the government outfit that need to be reformed. And how can we do that? So I think, of course, I, I can't spell it out with a short period of time. That is in our mind. That is already there. I think, uh, but more importantly, I think the question that you posed me just now, Ben, the important part is it, how best we can unite this. And if you want to unite unite relation, it must be based on how inclusive you are. And the only way is a multiracial based party like Marisan. Yes. Well, that's a story. It's been a very, very enjoyable interview and episode. Uh, what what Hana and I like to do as MCs and presenters is that we always like to finish something with a hashtag because in this generation you have to speak hashtags to people. Kalau you cakap karangan or essay or PhD paper, people get lost in translation. Tapi dulu apa apa. So you know, astaga apa macam ni apa cerita ni. You know, like they'll say things like that. So we like to keep it up with that. So the summary of this interview, which we will hashtag in the interview, is hashtag no race, hashtag diversity, hashtag inclusiveness, hashtag progressiveness, hashtag fair, hashtag what is sun. That was Rishafi Shafi Abdel, President of Warisan. We wish you all the very best for the next general election. We wish you all the very best for life after the next general election. And we congratulate you on registering what is sun with that Sumanji Malaysia. Thank you so much. And inshallah, we'll catch up soon. If you ever have a good story to tell, that's three, just WhatsApp us. We'll put you on Great People TV to tell more great stories because you are a fantastic storyteller. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ben, for allowing me to be on your platform here. I really appreciate this to enable me to reach out as many as possible. I think it's indeed one of the way forward for us reaching out to as many as possible. We don't care the numbers, whether they're 10 people, whether they're 20 people. We have to touch the heart you know, to all Malaysians at large. Thank you for allowing me to be here with you today. Ben and Anna. God bless you all. Happy New Year. And also, Merry Christmas to the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Wow. There you have it. MashaAllah, I think it's pretty eye-opening as well. I think we kind of have an understanding, a clear understanding what Warisan is all about, what his vision is all about, and what um, the DNA that Warisan has that in a way align with his personality and his um, principles principles as well, Ben. No, it, it's true. Like, I must admit, uh, Hana, I, I quite like that those three. I mean, as a politician, every time I see him on YouTube, that he goes down to the ground, you know, he turun padang, as we say in Malaysia, the way he engages in the audience, you know, from Sampurna, Dari, you know, Likas, Dari Sini, Dari Sana, I was like, wow, I mean, I can't do that lah. You know, so like, it's just absolutely amazing. And, you know, he's a man of his word, you know, I mean, I, I've never dealt with a very, very, or we have never dealt with such a senior person that, you know, 
uh, he's returning my calls. Oh yeah, yeah, I can come on the show here. I can come on the show there. I can't come on the show here. So I suck it the car. So you know, very open and you know, transparent. Calm and collected and, as well. And, and very polite. You know, very polite. So you know, like, calm and collected. So Alhamdulillah, and you know, we wish we wish him all the very best. And it's such yep. an honor to have him. Great people to have him on Great People TV. So. Now, as usual, when we finish with Great People TV, kita ada soalan untuk our viewers. Yeah, soalan kita anda boleh lihat di paparan skrin pada tahun bilakah parti warisan ditubuhkan? Oh my God, easy peasy. <laughs> Tutup mata pun boleh jawab. Okay, I repeat, pada tahun bilakah parti warisan ditubuhkan? And if you answer this correctly, which you will, you will stand a chance to win uh, items from AccuAnswer that will help monitor your health. Um, and yeah, health is wealth. So yeah. Health is wealth. <laughs> and stick around and chance to win an AccuAnswer. I saw four in one multifunctional blood glucose meter. If you answer swalan do that question, it will all be okay. Momantai, sub sub sui, you will get the prize. <laughs> so yep. So thank you very much everyone for watching Great People TV today. Uh, we've got more great uh, content coming up, more uh, great guests coming next week, the week after. We will not stop. Inshallah, we can run every Wednesday and, you know, and we will give you a very good guest. We, uh, please follow us on Instagram. We're also on Instagram right now. And, you know, continue to support us on Facebook and YouTube. But predominantly everything through Facebook. Lah. That'd be great people uh, on Instagram. It's a great way to communicate with us as well. Tell us who you want to be on the show as well because we will try to reach out through our network and contacts to get these great people. So on behalf of Hana, myself, Ben Ibrahim, and everybody here at Great People TV, we thank you so much, and we will catch you next week. Assalamualaikum and take care. Bye.